So it's an absolutely beautiful day, so I thought I'd go for a bit of a walk. I'm currently standing at the corner of a grid square, so there's no kind of big geographical features, I'm just in the wood. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be walking as directly as I can from one corner of a grid square to the other. So what I'm going to be doing is going a thousand metres west and a thousand metres north, and hopefully that means I end up at a point which is about 1400 metres away from where I'm standing at the moment. So we're going to go on this little bit of a journey and as we go through this we're going to be looking at things like distance, displacement, speed, velocity and so on. So um, yeah, basically it's that way over there. Now I had been trying to go in a straight line uh, and some of the terrain was quite good in the woods but I think as I've been going further and further in a pretty much a straight line on my bearing which is going from uh, south east to northwest. Uh, what I've found is that um, the terrain is just difficult and if I was to go in a straight line following that bearing I'd soon end up going through really really thick woodland and maybe even up and down some cliffs. So as I fight my way through I'm going to take a bit of a diversion. Uh, I can see actually now things kind of clear out a bit and there's a bit of a footpath ahead so I'm going to take the footpath down the hill I'm going to meet a road and then follow the road and then see if I can find a way back up uh, through some of the kind of the rocky crops to the point I'm actually trying to get to. So uh, yeah, let's keep going. So I followed the path, taken a bit of a diversion, so cut off the corner, just come down the slope over here. And in front of me now, there's the road. And I'm just going to be following this road. It winds down the valley a bit and then hopefully I can find a way back up the other side. So this is probably the most dangerous part of my journey because I'm on the main road. But what I'm going to do is just kind of keep close to the side. The terrain's pretty good actually, so that means I can actually maybe just start jogging, start running. And that means hopefully I'll get to the end point as quick as possible. So I've just come off the road now. It's been quite a nice route, but it's quite sort of winding as we go along the bottom of the gorge. And actually I found that I need to be right at the top of these cliffs over here. And actually uh, there does seem to be a little bit of a footpath that I suppose kind of works its way up there through there. So I'm going to see if I can uh, get up that up to the top of this fantastic uh, gorge that I'm in at the moment. So I'm kind of almost near the top of what can only be described as a stupid route up the side of the gorge. Uh, it's a lot kind of muddier and actually kind of loose than I thought it might be. And I've still got uh, a little bit uh, further to go just to sort of keep scrambling up uh, the rest of the, the face there. But um, it's been pretty, uh, pretty terrifying I suppose honestly. But I'm just going to keep going now till I get to the corner of that grid square which is um, over the top and a few hundred metres beyond that. So I've made it to a fairly nondescript corner of the field, but this is the point where the grid lines actually cross over on the map. And I'm actually about 1400 metres or so from where I started, but actually I've had to walk a lot further than that to get here because I couldn't just go in a straight line. I had to follow a path. I went down the road, which again didn't go in a straight line, but it kind of went around a load of corners. I then went up a stupid, muddy, steep slope and across a couple of fields to get here. And that really brings me on nicely, well, I suppose that's why I'm doing this video, it's not just an excuse to get out in the countryside, but it's a really nice way to illustrate the difference between distance and displacement. Now distance is a scalar quantity and it just has a size. So in this case here, the distance is how far I've actually travelled, the amount of metres that I've gone. But displacement is distance in a certain direction. And that means it not only has a size, but also a direction. And if we think about where I started and where I ended, it's effectively as the crow flies, the straight line distance from the start to the end position. And we can measure that not only in metres, and we can maybe use Pythagoras there to look at the fact we've got a right angle triangle. If it's exactly a thousand metres this way and a thousand metres that way, we can then work out very precisely the exact distance I am from the starting position. But we can also work out the direction, perhaps measuring it with a bearing or an angle, maybe if you're using your protractor. So let's go back and have a look at this in a little bit more detail. So this is a map that I used and I started down at this corner down here and I sort of fought my way th through the woods. Uh, I went down this path down here. I then got down to the road and it was a nice gentle stroll or a little bit of a jog down the hill. It was actually difficult to find a way up the cliff here because it was really steep. In actual fact, I ended up going all the way down to here. I then went up through the cliff up this way up here 
Um, and then I found, I kind of went over this field along here and eventually I got to my end position. So in red is the, the actual way that I, re I went. And what we can then do is we can think about the distance. Now, to measure the distance of something like this, uh, you can use something like a piece of string and you can put the piece of string along it. You can also use the edge of a piece of paper. And what you can actually do with a piece of paper is you can actually start to mark on along the edge of that paper how far you've actually traveled. And if I do that for this, it turns out that the actual distance I went was equal to 2,800 meters, so almost three kilometers. But that's different to the displacement. The displacement is that direction and distance from the start to the end position. So I'm going to draw that on here. So in black, I'm going to have my displacement. Now to work out the size of that displacement, we actually don't need to measure it. What we can use is a bit of mathematics. We have a right angle triangle where we've got a thousand meters on this side, a thousand meters on this side, and by using Pythagoras, we can say that the length of this side is going to be the square root of a thousand squared plus a thousand squared. And this gives us the value of 1,414. So the displacement, uh, I'm just going to say that's equal to 1,400 meters. We can actually see that's half of this, just that's a bit of a coincidence really. Um, and the other thing we need for a displacement is the direction. And often we can use an angle for this. Um, because this is a diagonally going up to the northwest, um, we know that that angle in here must be equal to 45 degrees. So we might say that it's 45 degrees uh, from this point here. We could also give a bearing and we could maybe say it's a bearing. Bear in mind bearings go up to 360 degrees if we're thinking about a compass. Um, it's going to be equal to 360 take away 45 um, and that means it's a bearing of 315 degrees. So this is just to really emphasize that distance is how far something's traveled, but displacement is that distance in a certain direction.